In the previous video I covered the history of the G5RV antenna. At the time I didn't have a copy of the original article in the RSGB bulletin. Well, I'm glad to say that I've actually obtained a copy of the article that appeared in 1958 in the bulletin and um, at the beginning of this video I'll show you some better shots of the diagrams published by Louis Varney in that uh, magazine. Thanks for joining me on this video channel. My name is Peter Waters. My ham radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. I'm going to talk about the half size 5RV and uh, I've had a brief look at it recently. But before we do that, let me just show you some diagrams that weren't very good on the previous video because I didn't have a copy of the original Radcom bulletin. But now I have a copy of the bulletin. So I can show you on the screen the three shots. First shot is showing the basic G5RV full size, uh, 51 foot either side and the 34 foot bladder line and then the 75 ohm uh, balance feed that went back to the uh, transmitter. Then there's the alternative version which we also talked about where the 5RV is fed with balance line, ladder line all the way back to the antenna matching unit and that I think is the favoured arrangement that Louis Varney will probably have used. And then a diagram which is not uh, often published but also appeared in this article and it shows the current and voltage distribution of the antenna on the different bands and you may find that somewhat uh, sort of interesting just to know and give you some idea of the matching capability of the antenna on the various bands. And I hope that clears that up and you've got some decent views of the three diagrams that appeared in that original um, bulletin back in 1958. So let's now look at the half size G5RV. The half size G5RV is what you might expect. All the dimensions are divided by two and the antenna then is claimed to cover 40 through to 10 meters. And obviously the advantage of the half size 5RV is that it does fit into the smaller garden. You do lose 80 metres but uh, you don't get anything for nothing these days. So this is the 5R half size 5RV. So let's just take a look at it. We have a top section which is 51 foot overall from end to end. We break it in the middle like a conventional dipole. We feed it with ladder line. Um, I've used 450, that's the favorite. 450 ohm ladder line. And you need 17 foot of ladder line there. The, the full size one is 102 foot long and 34 foot of ladder line. So we're halving everything, 51 foot and 17 foot of feeder. Now the interesting thing about this is that if you bother to, to check the measurements you'll find that you get a very low impedance there on 20 meters, in other words a high current point, and you also get a very low impedance on 10 meters which again is a high current point. On 40 meters the point of maximum current is around about there, sort of say halfway down. So it means to say on 40 meters, you're not going to get such a low impedance. You're going to get a medium impedance on 40 meters, excellent on 20 and 10, um, and medium impedance on 40 meters. On the other bands, you've got a pretty high impedance. So let's now see how that translates into the measurements that I will now make uh, using an SWR analyzer just to see whether the the um, measurements we make tally up with the, the theory of this low impedance on 20 and 10 and medium on 40. So what I'm doing now, and I'm connecting the coax feed from the G5RV, the half size 5RV, to the antenna analyzer, and then we'll switch it on, do a scan, and that'll show us the resonant points across the spectrum from 40 meters down to uh, 10 meters. And as you can see here, 
we've got three points of resonance. On the left hand side is the 40 meter point of resonance, which is the three to one VSWR. And then we've got almost a perfect match on 20 meters and 10 meters, much as we expected. So the next thing to do now is to plug this antenna straight into the back of my ICOM IC7300 and just see whether the antenna tuner will match it on 40 meters. Because bear in mind on 20 and 10, we've almost got a perfect match. You don't really need an antenna tuner or an antenna matcher. But on 40 meters, I think we need some help. So let's see whether the ICOM 7300 will match it on 40 meters and how it shows up on the 20 and 10 meter bands. With the antenna directly plugged into the back of the IC7300, we'll check the VSWR and there's no ATU switched in at the moment. And you can see there's a fairly high VSWR as expected because we've already measured it as just over 3 to uh, 1. Now yeah, let's um, switch the ATU in and do those measurements again. Right, so ATU tuned. And now you can see that we've got a very low VSWR. It's almost one to one, as you'd expect, because the tuner in the 7300 is coping very well with this antenna on 40 meters. On 20 meters, we expect a very good VSWR and I've left the tuner switched off and we'll just see what the um, VSWR is shown on the screen here. And you can see it's, it's very low, it's very acceptable. So you don't actually need an antenna tuner switched in. The 7300 will directly feed the half size G5RV without worrying about an antenna tuner. You could switch it in just to get it right down to zero, but uh, I think that proves the point that it's a very good match on 20 meters. As that uh, test was made at the bottom of the band, we go further up the band and just see what happens. And you can see that uh, the, um, the VSWR is very low um, right across the uh, 20 meter band. So it's a very good match on 20 meters without any need for an antenna tuner. Now, if we go to the bottom of the band, a 10 meter band without an antenna tuner unit. You see we've got a very low SWR um, which indicates that it's resonance near the bottom of the 10 meter band which is fine for CW perhaps not so good for phone. Now if we move further up the 10 meter band again without an antenna tuner switched in you can see the SWR is coming up a bit. It's still acceptable but it does indicate that the resonance is actually at the lower parts of the 10 meter band but that is without a, a tuner switched in. So with a tuner switched in, you could easily cover the whole of the 10 meter band. I subsequently did some checks on the antenna and I cut a few inches, about four inches off of the feeder, make it slightly shorter. That brought the resonance on 10 meters down to um, about uh, 1.2, 1.3 to one at the uh, 28.500 megahertz point which meant to say it was ideal for 10 meters. It had virtually no difference uh, to the 20 meter band and it marginally improved the 40 meter band. So if you look at the uh, dimensions I mentioned um, and then make the feeder slightly shorter, you'll probably get the same results as I do. As always with antennas, it's best to make the antennas slightly longer than you would normally do uh, according to the diagrams and then trim them because you can always uh, trim antennas but you can't put bits on the end. So. Um, with that slight modification, it was a good three-band antenna. Now to cover the other bands, um, I've used the LDG AT100 antenna tuner. That was the best I could get. It's not. Um, it's not. It's around about two to one. That's the best match I could get. So it was struggling a bit on 10 megahertz, but it it worked and it got a match. On 18 uh, megahertz, the LDG matched it quite well, so we got uh, a good match there. So no problem on 18 megahertz with uh, an external antenna tuner. On 21 megahertz, 
it struggled a bit you can see um, but it's just um, it's, it's acceptable and the 7300 will deliver uh, full power um, but as you can see the, the, the VSWR there is not uh, ideal it's um, probably around about 2 to 1 across the band there and on 24 megs again it got a match um, it's shown around about 2 to 1 I guess on there but the 7300 would deliver um, full power um, into the uh, antenna with the LDG antenna tuner. Now here's a trick which um, is quite interesting. It works on all bands. Um, you've seen that on the 24 meg or 12 meter band we get that's the best VSWR we can get using the LDG tuner. Now, if you keep that tuner set so that it gives its best setting, which is that, if I now switch in the tuner on the ICOM, we get a perfect match. What's actually happening is the ATU in the tuner is seeing something like a 2 to 1 VSWR because this is taking care of most of it. It then is able to tune for virtually zero VSWR. Now I should explain that you must first of all tune the tuner without the ATU switched in. Tune that and then once that's optimized you can then switch in the ATU on your 7300 or whatever transfer you've got and get a very good match. So that's quite a quite a neat trick. Now it's important to remember that you haven't got rid of the VSWR on your coax cable. All we're doing is creating a situation whereby the transceiver can deliver full power. The transceiver sees a good match, delivers full power. You've still got any losses on the coax cable. For my um, uh, installation here, I used uh, RG58. Gracious me, RG58 on 10 meters, Peter. Yes, RG58 is pretty good on 10 meters. Don't forget, you use RG58 on 2 meters on your mobile system. So RG58 on 10 meters is okay. Uh, the SWR losses, well, they're not as much as you, you might think on those bands where you need an external ATU, possibly. 2 dB, something like that, absolute maximum. So don't worry too much about that. And I've had a number of contacts on those bands and it's, it, it works fine. So let me just show you the installation I used in my garden. Very simple, a bit of a lash up really, I suppose. But anyway, this is what I used in my garden. Here you see the connection, the coax cable to the balance line. I just soldered a socket on the end there. And uh, there's the mast supporting the antenna at the centre. It's basically horizontal, but I've got a centre mast there taking up the slack, so the centre of the antenna is, is pretty high. And you can see the uh, balance line going up the side of the fiberglass pole there. Should have uh, tied it off, really, I suppose. But anyway, it was a temporary uh, set up to test the antenna. By the way, uh, the fiberglass mask that I use is spider pole uh, fiberglass mask telescopic this one goes up to nearly 40 foot and uh, this one I've had for about five years and uh, it's got some battle scars on it well battle scars it's got some tape on there but it's survived and it telescopes up and down no problem at all I have to clean that off that sticky stuff has come off this tape but uh, once I clean that off, it'll telescope up and down. They're really well made, they're really tough fiberglass um, poles. So remember the name spider pole. You will notice that I didn't use a ballon to terminate the coax to the ladder line. Uh, Louis Varney suggested that that was not a good idea, but I have used a line isolator to stop common mode currents flowing down the outer sheath of the coax. Here's another little trick you could do with this antenna. Let me show you on a drawing here. You can drop the ends down by five foot, something like that. That means to say the antenna will fit into a garden 40 foot long. You could actually drop a bit more. And that won't really affect the performance of the antenna or the polar diagram. So if 
got a small garden, drop the ends down and uh, you'll fit it into the garden. So I was very impressed with this antenna. As it stands without an external antenna tuner, it covers 40, 20 and 10 meters. 40 meters is open all the time. 20 meters is open a lot of the time and 10 meters when it's open gives you some great DX. And this antenna has got some gain on 10 meters. So it's a nice little antenna, three bands. Add an external antenna tuner and you've got 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12 and 10 meters. Not bad for a simple wire antenna. Of course, you do have to have the external antenna tuner. By the way, we saw the um, LDG AT100 external antenna tuners. We also sell spider poles. And we sell coax cable, we sell ladder line. So if you want to try this antenna in your garden, uh, go onto our website or give us a call and we'll be happy to put a package together for you. I was very impressed. I was more impressed about, with this antenna than I thought I would be. I haven't used the half size before, but it's performed very well and I've had some interesting contacts on it. And I, I think I'll give, keep it up for a little while, actually. It's a good antenna. So, as usual, thank you for watching this video. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. You take care. Bye for now.